evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. I'm Don Uriel de Buenaventura from Schools Division of San Jose del Monte, and I'll be the moderator for this evening session. And I hope that everything we'll learn from this session that will help us to produce quality research outputs. Now, this advocacy will not be possible without the initiative of embracing the Culture Research Center, spearheaded by our head educational research consultant, Dr. Richard D. Sanchez. And this advocacy program, Sagip Mananliksi, was spearheaded or pioneered by Dr. Bernadette Lejarda for Sagip Mananliksi for everyone. And then for Sagip Mananliksi one-on-one, which is a one-on-one -on -one basis of coaching and mentoring research writers and students, we have Dr. Lawrence Carvajal. Okay, without further ado, Let's formally start this session with a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Or something happened with my connection. So let us pray spontaneously. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father Almighty, we bless and glorify your name. We thank you for all the blessings you ushered upon us by keeping safe from our work and attending to this meaningful webinar. Bless our resource speakers, facilitators, and all research consultants here. May this meaningful learning experience be a fruitful one in order for us to come up with a very reliable and usable research outputs. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So also this evening, I would like to welcome all the research consultants coordinators from different city and provinces and regional coordinators who joined this event. So without further ado, let's have the welcome message coming from Dr. Angelo Peñaradonda. A virtual applause for him. All right, so good evening everyone. Thank you so much to our moderator, Sir John. Okay, so before I continue, no, my welcome message, actually I would like to share with you one of my students kasi kanina approached me, sir. Pibili uh, kasi last time, nagtatanong sila about research. So I always uh, I give them the link and of course, I endorse at course. Sabi ko, panoorin niyo yun because of uh, maraming learnings talaga. Ano? So kanina, nag-ano siya, nag-approach akin, sir, thank you so much. Kasi marami ka rin natutunan na sometimes in the classroom, hindi na bibigay ni teachers or sometimes di na well explained, di ba? So, sab naisip ko na paano pa sa other students across the archipelago. So, that's why I'm very thankful to be part of this uh, organization, the Embracing the Culture of a Research Educational Center. So, that, that's, uh, I think, uh, I really want to share with you our dear, uh, my, my colleagues and of course, uh, sa other uh, participants dito. So, good evening, everyone. No? So, it is my great uh, pleasure to welcome you to another series of virtual research webinars under the project Sagitman and Lixik for everyone of education, uh, embracing the culture of research, uh, research center with the team, asking the right questions, revisiting the crucial parts in conceptualizing 
a quantitative study. We are very grateful to our energetic and dynamic head research consultant, Dr. Richard Sanchez, and of course to Dr. Adrian Lawrence Carbajal and Dr. Bernadette Liharde for this opportunity and tremendous support and of course the initiative to make this event possible. And I'm very sure in this webinar, I recognize our partic uh, participants as uh, students, teachers, and researchers, researchers from both uh, public and private schools across the archipelago. We all understand the importance of research in our day-to-day -day lives and how research transforms the world. I believe that by participating in this webinar, we are in the right place and the right time together, let us accelerate the exchange of ideas and the scaling up of good practices through our lecturer this evening, Dr. Francis Gumawa. I am confident that you will find new ideas, fresh energy and novel partnerships to sustain your efforts in the field of research. I wish you all a very successful webinar. And of course, I really want to thank this organization and welcome to in this webinar. So thank you so much and God bless everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Peña Rodonda. And as Sir mentioned, that this evening session will really highlight asking the right questions, which is a very crucial and important part in research. Now, be reminded that during this session, that we need to observe proper decorum. Always keep our microphone mute, and then you may switch off your video cam to save bandwidth. And then if you have questions, reserve it later after the lecture, or you may prompt it or post it on our chat pane, and then it will be read later. Okay, for follow-ups, you may also raise a hand after the lecture will take place. So let's listen enjoy and learn. Now, this evening session will not be put into realization without our able lecturer. And let me introduce to you our able lecturer this evening. Our ABLE lecture came from or hails from Antipolo City, a teacher three from Knights of Columbus Elementary School, finished his doctorate degree major in educational management. And I believe as I stalk his FB page, he's a CI project leader and regional coordinator of EDCOR also. Ladies and gentlemen, our resource speaker this evening, Dr. Francis, Andres Gumawa. A virtual round of applause. Maraming salamat po, uh, Sir Oriel. So, uh, makishare maki lang po ng screen. Okay po, uh, good afternoon to all po. Good afternoon teacher, uh, good evening teachers, uh, my fellow research consultants po, uh, good evening sa lahat. So today po, uh, this evening, uh, the topic po, asking the right questions, revisiting crucial parts in conceptualizing a quantitative study po. So part of this uh, topic po, ito po yung learning objective po natin ngayong gabi. So these are the topics or objectives that assigned to me. So number one po, describes characteristics, strengths, weaknesses, and kinds of quantitative research. So this is very basic po sa mga nagtuturo po sa practical research po sa senior high school. And then know the importance of quantitative research across fields. And last po, differentiate kinds of variables and their uses po. So this is a 
A topic po under day one po sa ating quantitative research po. To start with, so I have here the seven characteristics of quantitative research. So this is according to Rihunel 2015. So the first one, contain measurable variables. So ano ibig sabihin po nito? So data gathering instruments contain items that solicit measurable characteristics of the population. These measurable characteristics are referred to as the variables of the study. Yung mga age, number of children, educational status, economic status, and etc. Okay po? And then number two po, use standardized research instruments. So from this po, the data collection instruments include the questionnaires, pools, surveys, standardized pretest, TED instruments, guide data collections, thus ensuring the accuracy, reliability, and the validity of data. And at the same time po, pretesting pre helps identify areas in the research, instruments that need revisions. It makes sure that respondents provide the expected answers or satisfies the intent of the researcher to meet the research objectives. So yun po yung ibig sabihin ng use standardized research instruments. So number three po, assumes a normal population distribution. So for more reliable data analysis of quantitative data, a normal population distribution curve is preferred over a non-normal distribution. Why? Because this requires a large population, the numbers of which depend on how the characteristics of the population vary. This act requires adherence to the principles of random sampling to avoid researchers' bias in interpreting the results that defeat the purpose of research. And then number four, po, it presents data in tables graphs or figures. So the data obtained using quantitative method are organized using tables, graphs, and figures that consolidate large numbers of data to show trends, relationships, or differences among variables. So this fosters understanding to the readers or clients of the research investigation. And then number five po, use, re repeatable, uh, use repeatable method. So researchers can repeat the quantitative method to verify or confirm the findings in another setting. This reinforces the validity of groundbreaking discoveries of find or findings, thus eliminating the possibility of spurious or erroneous conclusions. And then number six po, can predict outcomes. So ibig sabihin po, quantitative models or formula derived from data analysis can predict outcome. If then, scenarios can be constructed using complex mathematical computations with the aid of computers. And then number seven po, use measuring devices. So advanced digital or electronic instruments are used to measure or gather quantitative data from the field. So the instruments ensures an objective and accu accurate collections of data provided that these are calibrated. Calibration means that the instrument used by the researchers matches the measurements or of a reference instrument that is considered a standard. The characteristics of a quantitative research method listed in this, uh, uh, according to Rionel 2015, uh, mixed research approach popular among researchers. So the use of quali qualitative research method, however, are appropriate on issues or problems that need not require quantification or exploratory in nature. Okay po? 
And I have here also the strengths of quantitative research. So according to Miller 2020, so these are the strengths of quantitative uh, research. Number one, the quantitative approach allows you to re reach a higher sample size. So when you have the ability to study a larger sample size for any hypothesis, then it is easier to reach an accurate generalized uh, conclusion. The additional data that you have received from this work gives the outcome greater credibility because the statistical analysis has more depth to review. A larger sample makes it less likely that outline, outliers in the study group can adversely impact the results you want to achieve impartially. Okay, po. And then number two, po, you can collect researchers, collect information for the quantitative research process in real-time scenarios so that statistical analysis can occur almost immediately. So experiments, surveys, and interviews provide, provide immediate answers that become useful from the data-centered approach. So fewer delays in the acquisition of these resources makes it easier to find correlations that eventually lead toward a useful conclusion. Because uh, quantitative research doesn't require the separation of systems or the identification of variables to produce results. That is why it is a straightforward process to implement. And then number three, po, quantitative research uses randomized sample. So when research participants suspect that a study wants to achieve a specific result, then their personal bias can uh, enter into the data spectrum. The answers provided on the included materials are partial truth or outright lies as a, a way to manipulate the work. That is why the quantitative approach is so useful when trying to study a specific hypothesis within a large population demographic. And then number four po, results duplication is possible when using quantitative research. So when opinions are a valid substitute for facts, then anything becomes possible. Quantitative research eliminates uh, this problem because it only focuses on actual data. The work validates itself because the result always point toward the same data, even though randomized condition exists. So there can be a minute variation found over time, but the general conclusions that researchers develop when using this process stay accurate. So that is why information is useful when looking at the need for specific future outcomes. The facts provide statistics that are suitable to consider when difficult decisions must get made. And then for the continuation po, number five, quantitative research can focus on facts or series of information. So researchers can use the quantitative approach to focus on a specific fact that they want to study in a general population. So this method is also useful when a series of data points are highly desirable within a particular demographic. It is a process that lets us understand the reasons behind our decisions, behaviors, or actions from a societal viewpoint. When we comprehend the meaning behind the decisions that people made, then it is easier to discover uh, pain points or specific preferences that require resolution. Then the data analysis can extend to the rest of the population so that everyone can benefit from this work. And then number six, the research performed with a quantitative approach is anonymous. 
Ibig sabihin, as long as researchers can verify that individuals fit in the demographic profile of their study group, there is no need to provide personal information. The anonymous nature of quantitative research makes it useful for data collection because people are more likely to share an honest perspective when there are guarantees that their feedback won't come back to haunt them. Even when interviews or surveys are part of this work. So the personal information in a screening tool instead of an identifying trademark. And then last for number seven, quantitative research doesn't require direct observation to be useful. So researchers must follow specific protocols when using the quantitative method, but there is not a requirement to directly observe each participants. That means a study can send surveys to individuals to directly observe each participant. That means a study can send uh, surveys to the individuals without the need to have someone in the room while they have provide answers. This advantage creates better response rate because people have more time and less pressure to complete this work. So although the difficulty of the questions asked or the length of a survey or interview can be a barrier to participation, the amount of data that researchers collect from the quantitative process is always useful. So kung meron po tayong strengths of quantitative research, meron naman po tayong weakness of quantitative research. So number one, this method doesn't consider the meaning behind the social phenomena. So the quantitative approach wants to find answer to specific questions so that particular hypotheses can be proven or disproven. It doesn't care about the motives that people have been sharing an opinion or making decision. The goal of this information collecting process is to paint a present time picture of what is happening in the selected demographic. That means this option cannot measure the ways in which society changes or how people interpret their actions or that or of others. And then number two po, every answer provided in this research method must stand on, on its own. So ibig sabihin po, uh, quantitative research does not give you uh, the option to review answers with participants. The replies provided to researchers must stand by themselves. Even if the information seems confusing, or it is invalid, instead of following a tangent like other methods, the quantitative option has very few opportunity to ask for clarity. Part of this disadvantage or weaknesses of quantitative research is due to the anonymous nature of the data that researchers collect. If an uh, answer provides inclu inconclusive result, then there is no way to guarantee the validity of what was received. It is even possible to skew results when a question might be incorrectly formatted. And then number three po, quantitative research sometimes creates unnatural environments. So quanti quantitative research works well when a verifiable environment is available for study. Researchers can then take advantage of the decisions that made in the arena to extrapolate data that is useful for review. There become times when this approach generates a natural scenario based on the questions asked or the approaches used to solicit information. Just a particular can attempt to skew results by providing falsified answer. Researchers can attempt the same result by influencing the data of the work in its initial stages. And then number four, po, some efforts at the randomization will not create usable information. So the quantitative approach doesn't look for the reason why variables 
exist in a specific environments. Its goal is to find the different aspects of a demographic in a particular setting to the extrapolate data that can be used for generalization purposes. Although the impact of the randomization adds validity to the re final results. There can be times when the information is not usable. One person might decide to purchase, for example, the pizza because they have a long day at work and don't feel like cooking at home. Another individual can make that uh, the same decision is not it's in Tuesday and they always purchase pizza on that day. So a third household might become customers of a pizzeri because they are celebrating a family birthday. So quantitative data looks at the fact that everyone bought pizza and it doesn't care about the reason why. And then for continuation po, for the weaknesses of quantitative research, number five po, there is no access to specific feedback. So quantitative research could be the best described as the pass-fail grade. You know for a certain that a majority of a population demographic will feel a specific way about a particular situation because of the data that researchers collect. You know that everyone purchases pizza, but what you don't know is what many people enjoy the experience will come back for another transaction in the future. So the statistics that researchers gather when using this approach are useful for generalizations that let you see if goods or services earn a passing grade in a specific demographic. demographic. What this data cannot produce are specific feedback incidents that allow for positive refinement. And then number six po, quantitative research studies can be very expensive. So if the price is on the issue with the research work must be done, then the quantitative approach has a significant barrier to consider. Bakit po? Kasi nga po, uh, isa-isahin mo po yung pupuntahan yung mga schools o yung mga business owners po to distribute your questionnaires or survey po para po malaman po ninyo ang uh, sagot po sa, uh, sa mga questionnaires na po iyon. So that it why it takes time, it takes a lot of uh, money po, lalo na na po kung wala po kayong sasakyan. And then number eight po, and number seven po, answers validity always creates a cloud of doubt on the final answers. So researchers have no meaningful way to determine if the answers some one gives during the quantitative research effort are accurate. Lalong lalo na po ngayon sa panahon ng pandemic. Kasi nga po, uh, we are sending the link po for the teachers or the business owners po to answer the, li the, the survey po or the questionnaire po. So, hindi po po natin ma-verify ma kung uh, sila po ang sumagot ng uh, link na po iyon. And then number eight po, individual characteristics don't always apply to the general population. So researchers are always facing the risk that the answer or characteristics given a quantitative data uh, study are not uh, accurate representation of the entire population. It is relatively easy to come to the false conclusions or correlations because of the assumptions that are necessary for this work. Okay po? Kaya, kaya nga po, ito po yung mga disadvantage po or mga weaknesses po ng quantitative research po. Okay, let us now proceed. So, I have here the kinds of variables and their uses po ng quantitative research po. So, una po, uh, demographic variables. Pag sinabi po natin uh, demographic uh, variables po, okay po, pag sinabi po natin demographic variables po, uh, social workers po are often interested in what we call the demographic variables. So, demographic variables are used to describe characteristic of a population 
group or sample of the population. So halimbawa po ng mga demographic variable, yung ginagamit po natin sa dissertation sa ating mga thesis po, like age, religious affiliation, gender, sexual orientation, marital or status, employment status, geographical location, educational le level, and then income po. So yun po mga example ng mga demographic variables na ginagamit po natin sa quantitative research. And then po, number two po, dependent at saka independent variables. So a way that investigation thinks about study variables has important implication for the study design. So investigators make decisions about having them serve as either independent variables or as dependent variable. So this distinction is not something inherent to a variable. It is based on how the investigator chooses to define each variable. When we say independent variables are ones you might think or as a manipula manipulated input variables, while the dependent variables are the one which are the impact or output of that input variation would be observed. So in the, uh, intentional manipulation of the input or independent variable var is not always involved. So for example, po, of the study conducted, or examining the relationship between uh, having been the victim of a child mal maltreatment and later absenteeism from the high school. So no one intentionally manipulated whether the children would be victims of child maltreatment. So the investigators hypothesize that naturally occurring differences in the input variable, the child maltreatment history would be associated with a systematic variation in a specific uh, being the victim of uh, the child maltreatment. Okay po? And then, number three po, categorical variables. When we say categorical variables po, some variables can take on a values that vary. So, but not in a meaningful numerical way. So, instead, they might be defined in uh, terms of categories. Which are so, logically, these are called categorical variables po. Uh, statistical software are and textbooks sometimes refer to variables with categories as nominal variable. So nominal can be thought of deep, uh, of in terms of the Latin uh, root word nom, which means name, and should be confused with number. So nominal means the same thing as the categorical is describing variables. So in other words, categorical or nominal variables are identified by the names or labels of the represented categories. For example, the color that, uh, of the last car you rode in a wood categorical variable. For example, the blue, black, silver, white, and green. Okay? And then last, uh, number five, po, interval variables. So pag sinabi po natin interval variables po, uh, ito naman po yung uh, variables takes on the values that vary in a meaningful numerical fashion. From our list of demographic variables, age is a common example. So the numeric value assigned to an individual person indicates the number of years since a person was born in, for example, in the case of infants, the numeric value may indicate the days, the weeks, the months, or since birth. And then number six po, alphanumeric variables. So when we say alphanumeric variables po, Okay, when we say alphanumeric variables po, there are data which do not fit into this kind of class, classification po. Sometimes the information we know in the form of an address or telephone number. So a first or last name, the zip code or the 
uh, phrases. So these kinds of information are sometimes called alphanumeric variables. Okay? So halimbawa po, uh, minsan po pag uh, nag-survey po tayo ng ng lugar po. So, minsan may naglalagay ng street, may naglalagay ng city, may naglalagay ng barangay, may naglalagay ng municipality. So, that is example of numeric variables po. And then, quantitative research across fields po. For number one po, quantitative research and anthropology. So, it is very important po na uh, alam po natin yung uh, 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 Important, ang importansya po ng quantitative research sa anthropology, sa communication, sa medicine, sa behavioral science, sa educational and psychology, and then sa social science. So one of the example po na ginamit po yung quantitative research po sa social science, halimbawa po yung uh, build po na Republic Act build po ng poor peace. So ginamit po nila yung quantitative research po to determine po kung how many po yung mga Uh, kailangan supportaran po ng, mga, ng government po ng mga mamamayan po natin. Okay, for your output. So, make a reflection about the importance of quantitative research in your workplace po. And then send to my email po. So, ito po yung email ko po sa baba. So, again po, make a reflection about the importance of quantitative research po in your workplace. So, thank you very much po for listening. Uh, for your comments po, uh, please send to my email po. And then, if you have question po, uh, uh, meron po tayong moderator po dito. Thank you very much, Sir Francis. Let's give a virtual round of applause to our resource speaker, lecturer this evening, Dr. Francis A. Gumawa. So, a virtual round of applause to our lecturer. Now, for any questions um, um, from Ma'am Josephine Cleofas, sir, pwede po bang maka-request ng slides po? Okay. And then... Ito na po yung slide kay Dr. Sanchez po. Isi-send na lang po niya sa inyong mga email po. Okay. So noted, sir. Thank you very much. So for queries, uh, please type now your questions to our chat pane. And then I would like also to uh, take this opportunity. So sa, sa organization po ng EdCore, pasensya na po. I'm very sorry po dahil ginamit po nila yung Uh, picture ko po sa EdCourt, uh, lalo na po yung fake account po under my name. So, hindi ko po alam iyon. Kaya marami po yung nag-message po sa akin sa original account ko po uh, regarding po sa papagawa ng thesis, sa dissertation. So, hindi ko naman po alam iyon. Kaya, na, kaya nga po, uh, nagtaka po ako. So, sa ngalan po ng EdCourt, wala po akong kinalaman doon. Pasensya na po. So at present, sir, we are 49 in the meet. Any questions from our 49 participants? Clarifications from Sir Sherry? So from... Ma'am Geraldine Minas, thank you very much though, sir. Tapos from Ma'am Arlene Ticanas, good evening. Thank you po, mabuhay. So, word of appreciation uh, from them, sir. Sa mga participants. Um, questions, po, sir. how about questions? Any clarifications? Sa mga participants po, so thank you very much. So, ang aking topic lang po talaga, napaka very basic po at saka simple po. When you are attending po, uh, ongoing attend po ng ating uh, webinar po ng ating uh, re, uh, uh, seminar. Marami po kayo matutunan, lalong lalo na po doon sa part ng uh, crucial part po ng quantitative research po. Okay, sir, there is a question now from Morelia. Sorry if I would not mention your complete name. Uh, sir Francis, relevant po ang topic sa quantitative research po. Ba ay mahalaga yung tinatawag na respondent?
Sir Francis, um, there is a question. Um, relevant po ang topic. Sa quantitative research po ba ay mahalaga yung tinatawag na respondent? Yes po, mahalaga po yung respondent po sa quantitative research. Kasi hindi po tayo makakabuo ng ating findings, ng ating conclusion, at saka na ating recommendation po without them. Kaya nga po mahalaga, kasi pag, pag sinabing quantitative research po ito, po, ito po yung mga answer po nila sa survey, sa pool po, at saka po sa mga questionnaire po natin. So, therefore, it is very important to consider that uh, uh, respondents or participants in quantitative research is important. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Sir Morilla, um, another question, sir, from Ma'am Rosemary. There is a notion that qualitative research is inferior to quantitative research because the former is based on non-numerical data. Is this a myth or a fact? Okay, so para po sa akin, sa tanong po ni Ma'am Rosemary po, Sabi po niya, there is a notion that quantitative research is inferior to quantitative research because the former is based on the numerical data. So, uh, meet po ito, hindi po ito fact. Kasi nga po, it depends upon how we use the research design po, either quantitative or qualitative man yan. So, uh, isa lang naman po patutunguhan po ng ating research to find the truth po and the same time po to... Uh, uh, para malaman po natin katotohanan behind sa mga problem po natin. So yun lang po yung akin. Okay. Oh, I would like to share also, sir, no? in our SDO here in San Jose del Monte, select researchers attend mentoring sessions from Philippine Normal University. And recently, our speaker was Dr. Belisina and other way around naman siya. Uh, sabi nila, uso daw ang qualitative research, luma na yung quantitative research. But according to him, hindi luma at hindi naluluma ang quantitative research. Kailangan lang natin pumili ng mga bagong variables. Kaya mahalaga yung sharing mo kanina with different variables. Okay. Uh -huh. Question again, sir. Ilan po minimum ang need na respondent sa quantitative research to? Ilan po minimum ang need na respondent sa quantitative research? Uh, for me po, uh, uh, ang minimum po ng participants or respondents po sa quantitative research po, halimbawa po sa whole population po, 40% uh, carry na po iyon. Okay po, 40%. So, depende kasi sa orientation natin, sir. No? Pero tama nga po si sir, no? kasi from the population, we will get reliable samples. So, depende nga rin po talaga yon sa dami. Yung, yung classic, sir, no? kasi yung tanong niya pang method na eh. Pero sa mga pre next session pa yon no? Yung classic yes, sa pag-compute ng respondents, yung Slovin formula. Pero there are different sampling techniques na matututunan nila, sir, Next sessions. Sige yes, po. Yes, po. Okay. Sir, from Geraldine Minas, may related lead po ba ang qualitative research? Again po. So, para po sa akin, ay, ay, yung, yung tanong po is under qualitative, uh, qualitative po. So, therefore po, meron pong uh, related literature po yung qualita uh, qualitative po. Apo. Both po. Talaga naman pong both. Tandaan nyo po. Pagdating nyo dun sa, sa findings, sir, no? it will be yes, further po. justified with a related literature, lalo na yung mga inferential statistics natin na susunod. Kasi kumbaga ito kay sir, patikim pa lang ng quantitative research. Okay? Yes, po. Aha, may tanong pa. Ano po magandang quanti research for teachers, lalo na online distance learning tayo ngayon, sir? Yan po. Mm, para po sa akin, yung... Uh, kasi uh, kasi po uh, I am elementary teacher po. So ang pina ang maganda pong i-research po natin sa online po uh, para po sa akin mas reliable po kung tutukan muna natin yung si teacher. Ano po ba ang mga problema ni teacher bago para po ma magawa po niya ng maayos po ang kanyang pagtuturo para po ma matulungan niya po yung mga bata. 
Kasi pag bata pang uunahin natin sa online, hindi po tayo uh, sure po na mga sagot po nila o sa mga survey po uh, with regard po sa, sa quantitative research po. Okay, so yun po, no? Um, actually, sir, the 123rd public anniversary ng DepEd for DepEd Connect. For those who are connected in DepEd, actually, we can visit, for those researchers, we can check, we can browse. I forgot the DepEd, memo, DepEd order number, but there is the research agenda. At palagay ko kahit yung sa mga nasa college professors dito or instructors, lecturers, Lahat naman ng topic talaga, tama si Sir, sa pagtuturo muna sa bata, teaching and learning, pwede rin sa governance, child protection, so marami. Mapa face-to-face, -face, mapa distance learning, marami tayong ma kailangan lang talaga ng review of related lip or pagbabasa talaga. Okay, si Sir Alberto Dizon, may tanong siya. Are we still using Slovin's formula at present or is it Rausoff that we use to determine the number of respondents needed to have a valid and reliable results? From Sir Alberto Dizon, are we still using Slovin's formula at present or it's or is it Rausoff that we use to determine the number of respondents needed to have a valid and reliable results? Sir. Uh, actually po, sabi po ng professor ko po Ay, hindi na po ginagamit yung Slovin's formula. Slovin's, tama. Opo. So, para po naman sa para po naman sa DepEd, if we are under the DepEd, mas maganda po kung small size po, i-total yung enumeration yun na lang po para mas reliable po yung data. Actually, sir, iba-ibang school of thought, no? Pero yung Slovin's formula, tinuro pa sa amin at pinapagamit pa rin, depende dun sa panelist. Pero nung lumipat ako sa DepEd, hindi na nga ina-advise. So there are different sampling techniques kasi, no? Depende, may criterion sampling. Depende kasi kung, pero sa quantitative, matutunan the more the better naman sir, kasi talaga yung rule of thumb. Matutunan pa yan nila sir, sa next session. Okay. Marami pa yan sila matutunan sa next session. Next question from Elaine Sobrevega, sir. Sir, I want to ask, we are currently doing a study on the effects of the marketing mix for peace on consumer acceptability of a certain product tama po ba ang na, tama po ba ang na four, tama po ba na ang four piece product place price promotion ang dependent variable while customer acceptability is the independent variable sabi po ni ma'am Elaine nagtatanong Opo. siya kung tama kung Bali, tama sir. Yung four piece ang four DV piece niya. Yung study. Opo, four piece DV. Product place price promotion. Ang IB raw ay acceptability. Tama po ba raw yun? So, Hindi ko kasi hindi ko hindi ko kasi nabasa yung buong bu, buong study niya, buong thesis niya. So, pag sinabi po nating independent variable gaya nga po sa sinabi ko kanina, ito po yung uh, Gaya nga po ng sinabi ko kanina ng independent variables, ito po yung input variables. Pag sinabi namang dependent variables, ito naman po yung output variables. So hindi ko po uh, hindi ko po masasagot iyan kasi hindi ko po nababa, nabasa yung buong research po niya o buong study po niya. Pero papalagay ko sir no, ito I do not want to conclude but based on the given information parang baliktad siya. Kaya nga po sir. Parang baliktad siya. Kasi ang IV ay yun yung cost, dapat yun yung marketing strategy. Kasi when I was still handling, wala na kasi ko sa teaching, no? When I was still handling research in senior high, nung pilot school, matagal na panahon na po yun, um, 
nakita ko na tong variable na marketing strategy tong four P's eh. And it should be the independent variable. Affecting the dependent variable as criterion variable, uh, yun nga, acceptability. So, pag maganda ba yung four P's, acceptable ba? So, based lang yun dun sa given description niya. Pero tama si sir, we cannot conclude. Depende ka sa state, kung alignment ng statement of the problem and then the design, baka mag-vary pa. Pero based dun sa question na yun, opo, medyo baliktad siya, Ma'am Elaine sobre Vega. Uh, from Alberto Dizon again, sir, is there a basis for that 40%? I think it is depending on the number of your population. Kaya nga kanina ang tanong, uh, ilan, ba dapat sa, ilan ba yung okay na, okay na sa sample size? So again po, sabi ko po 40%, okay na po iyon sa total population. Alimbawa po, kung 100 po yung population, 40 uh, respondents, okay na po iyon sa quantitative research. Okay, sir. From Sir Robby Sangkap, what is the hardest part of quantitative research? All parts daw, ha? sabi ng ating... Admin. So for you, sir, personal question daw, what is the hardest part of a quantitative research? Uh, para po sa akin, yung pinaka-hardest po ng part ng quantitative research po ay uh, halimbawa po, doon po sa findings po ninyo, ito po yung findings sa hanapan mo po siya ng related literature. So doon po ako nahihirapan sa akin, sa akin na part po. Okay. Oh, kasi sir, ano eh, kailangan supported by RRN. Sir. Next. Yes, sir. Um, hi, sir. Since you have mentioned us about respondents, may I just ask, how do we select respondents for an experimental type of research? Uh, sa experimental type of research, di po ba, sir, meron po yung control at saka control group po? Apo. Actually, depende, sir. Eh. Kung pre-experimental, E di pwedeng lahat ng kumuha, i-pre-test and post-test nyo. Pero kung magko-quasay sila, dapat may pair matching analysis, magkamukha si control at saka si experimental group. So, hindi naman paramihan din yan, sir. Kasi mas reliable nga yung magkamukha yung experimental and control group po. For Sir Jose yon yung, Sir Jose ba? Tama po? Yung, yung mga tanong nila, sir, mga advance, <laughs> yan yung mga parts kasi, ng mga kasunod ko. Kasi na-stimulate nyo na, sir. Eh. In-introduce, no? So, ganun talaga. From Rosemary Amparado, sorry, hindi ko po na-read yung buong pangalan. Sa case study po, where the researcher needs to video record and trans transcribe verbal and nonverbal communication strategies, how many po ang manageable na number of participants? Nako, ano to, sir? Pang-quality to. Quality po yan. <laughs> Pero po though, sa iyo, man, kung ilang participants. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Though, ang case study, pwede rin siyang maging quantity provided that the data you are gathering is numbers or numerical. Pero sa <laughs> sa statement ni, uh, ni Ma'am Rosemary, eh, meron na tayo ditong video record. So, it's statements. Tapos, transcribe verbal and non-verbal communication. Eh, edi qualitative yon um, baka hindi po tayo matapos sa pag po nun. Pero how many po ang manageable participants? Depende po again. Kasi kahit ilagay nyo po dyan sa papel nyo na purposive sampling, how do this sample will serve its purpose? That's why you need to put criteria for that particular part. Oh, sige po. From Edcor... Depador number 16, 2017 ata, Research Management Guidelines, although may konting modifications recently, sir, yes. For Region 3, for funded research, ang sinusunod ay Regional Memorandum number 59, Series of 2017. Nandun kasi yung prescribed format. Medyo iniba from na central office. Pero yung iba pong region, si sir, taga Calabarzon yan, palagay ko, iba rin yung style nila. <laughs> kasi sila yung may ICBER. Okay po. And from Mo Sir Mohamed, ano po reason bakit di na ginagamit ang Slovin's formula po? Sir Francis. Sige sir, share your experience po. Uh, ah. Sir Francis, ibang university rin eh. Para ma-explain ko rin. Ako rin iba namang university. Sige po Sir Francis. But, but Ma'am Karen Krista Escobar um, shared 
an article, I believe, a link for the on the misuse of Slovin's formula. Kasi nga, pag na-compute mo na, hindi yun na. Basta mapasugat mo yung number na yun, ma-reach mo yung number na yun. Particularly, yun yung weakness ng Slovin. Pero sir, sa inyo po, bakit daw po bawal na uh, hindi na, actually, hindi na ginagamit, uh, dinidiscourage ang paggamit ng Slovin, sir. Hello? Nawala ba ako sa connection? O si Sir? Um, someone please respond po. Hello? Ako po ba'y nawala? We can still hear you, sir. We can hear you loud and clear, sir. Um, sir Francis, yun daw po. Will you share bakit daw po dinidiscourage ang paggamit ng Slovene ngayon? Sir? Ay, nawala si Sir Francis. <laughs> ah, sige. Based on my experience, no? Product po ako ng Technological University of the Philippines, Manila. Both masters and doctorate. Sa amin, ginagamit pa rin ang Slovene's formula in selecting. But there are some issues. That's why other institutions po, dinidiscourage po. Pero sabi ko nga, and I believe, Sir Tayan, June Larry Tayan, there are now conflicting ideas about research writing. So yun nga, that's why personally, pag mga gantong ano, for have us to have an open-minded, um, sometimes we need to empty our cup or put a little space for new information where we can learn. Sir Francis, sa inyo po, or pwede na yung sagot ko, Sir Francis, from Mark Sangil, I am teaching business research. Can I use G Power to compute for the sample size? Ah, uh, yes, po sir. Kung allowed po ng university po niyo, why not? O kung 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 allowed po ng school po niyo, why not? Pwede po iyon. Actually, sir, honestly, hindi ko alam yung G Power. <laughs> But I believe you can use different tools that will make your research more comprehensive. Normally, usually, I've encouraged related studies. So thank you, Sir Jun Larry. Uh, let's, you know, what is your perspective po as research head? Ah, may tanong pala, sorry. Pagkapal ng papel, pagluma ng study, less innovative. What is your perspective po as research head consultant? Sir Francis, Meron palang kadugtong. However, there is a recent move na dapat lesser na ang RRL because we need to innovate the argument. is like pagkapal ng papel, pagluma ng study, less innovative. What is your perspective po as research heads or consultants, Sir Francis? Um, sa, sa study po, sa thesis, sa dissertation, hindi naman po pakapalan ng papel. Ang importante naman po... Uh, Uh, na respond mo yung statement of the problem mo, na, na incorporate mo po yung mga suggestion ng panel. Yun po ang pinaka-importante sa lahat. Kung ano po yung gusto ng panel. Actually, ang, kasi kaya naman kumakapas yung kinakapipase. Eh. But we need to combine similar views of different existing studies or research. Combine it as one to synthesize. Kaya nga po, isang Important part for that is synthesis. Aha, from Sir Mohamed. So since Lovin's formula is not advisable already, what will be the appropriate formula to be used in determining sample population? Sir Francis. Kasi ano yan eh, sampling yan, no? Depend. Sorry po, no? Lagi ko sinasabi, depende. Depende po kasi talaga yan kung probability ba or non-probability sampling yung gusto natin i-apply sa ating mga studies. So, for example, meron kang 100 students and you need to set and you need to have 70 of them to become your respondents. How are you going to set a certain criteria or element that this 70 will be reliable enough to represent your total population. So for example, yung 
ano nyo, online games. Alam nga naman, magtanong ko ng 70 students sa 100 mong students na hindi naman naglalaro ng online games. So you need to consider that factor. Okay? Modular yung tatanungin mo. Okay? Pero online yung topic mo. So, di ba sir? Ganun po. Uh, yes, aside from slobin, other use po, stratified sampling. Sabi po ni Ma'am Apo Lebada. Pero yung da, yung thesis ko no stratified yun eh random sampling but I computed also Slovene for in making the different strata okay po Aha So percentage distribution po pwede rin yes, naman po, po gamitin po at saka marami po kayong matutunan uh, sa mga susunod na mga speaker po uh, about po dito sa mga sample size, mga how to compute, marami po kayong matutunan doon. Opo, kaya attend po tayo ng ating mga next sessions kasi po ito po ay di ba, sir, conceptualizing, understanding quantitative research, and then understanding the nature of variables. So tama po si sir. So kumbaga ito patikim pa lang. So since you have different ideas from that, definitely it will be enriched with the different experts that will really share their knowledge and experiences to us. Aha. I believe strat stratified sampling is a sampling method, not a formula stratified. Oh yes, Sir, Mo Sir Mohamed, noted. Okay, percentage distribution po. Ayan, tama po. Kasi alimbawa, sir, tama yan, no? Different groups yung gagawin mo respondents. Equally distributed data. Okay. Okay po. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Wala na pong katanungan. So, nagpasalamat ako si Sir Francis. So thank you very much, Sir Francis, for accommodating the questions for the 49 participants this evening. Let's give our lecturer a virtual round of applause again. So. Okay. Ay, meron pang humabol, sorry. You need to determine the sample size first before you can determine the respondents per stratum. Yes, per strata. Then were there any formulations in addressing the weakness of doing quantity? Wala. Kasi hindi naman perfect lahat ng research, say. Eh. Yes po, Yun sir. Po. Definitely. Walang perfect na research. So it's a cycle. May follow-up lagi. May evaluation. Okay. So with that, um, we'll... No more questions. At this point, we'll have the evaluation later. I'll be sending the link for the evaluation. Okay. So, but before that, On behalf of our EdCor, we'll have the closing message on this session from Dr. Mervin F. Gonya. Good evening, Dr. Don. Good evening, everyone. To our energetic head research consultant, of EdCore Educational Research Center, Dr. Richard Sanchez, my co-research consultants, our brilliant lecturer, Dr. Francis, our best moderator tonight, Dr. Don, their, their participants, magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. On behalf of EdCore Educational Research Center, 
thank you so much for participating and listening. I hope that you will bring takeaways from this very informative webinar. According to Nikos Kasan Sachs, in order to succeed, we must first that we can. Kaya wag matatakot mag-research dahil sa research, maraming solusyon at pagbabago. See you po on our day two series. Again, thank you so much and keep safe everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Gonya. And as witness, let's recognize the resource speaker first. I'm sorry for that. Um, let me read the citation of the Certificate of Recognition. EdCore Educational Research Center, Santa Ana, Pampanga, Philippines. Certificate of Recognition to Dr. Francis A. Gumawa, Research Consultant, EdCore Educational Research Center for his invaluable time and expertise as a resource speaker in the National Webinar on Quantitative Research of EdCore Educational Research Center, held on June 23 and July 7 and 21, 2021, and conducted under the advocacy project Sagip Mananaliksik for Everyone, with advisory from the Department of Education. Signed, Bernadette L. Leharde, Dr. Bernadette L. Leharde. Overall Project Coordinator, and Dr. Richard D. Sanchez, Head Research Consultant.